Welcome everybody on this lovely afternoon for another uh, Draw and Living Waters broadcast. Today we are live on episode 8. Episode 8. I cannot believe it's episode 8 already. And this is going to be on the Visual Disturbance channel. Welcome. And also on FOJC Underground Church. I'm your host Brian Reese. Um, it has been a while since we have been live and we are back and we're excited about this live broadcast today. Uh, this is episode 8. And today we will be exploring in this session uh, the miraculous event of the burning bush, the burning bush of Moses, and discuss the profound implications of this encounter described in the book of Exodus, um, chapter 3, 1 through 22. So the burning bush of Moses is one of the most well-known inspired stories in the Bible. It is a powerful narrative of how God communicates with humanity and reveals his divine plan. In Exodus chapter 3, and here today, I have Adam Abara to help me narrate and illustrate this well-known story, The Burning Bush of Moses. Welcome back, Brother Adam. How the heck are you today? And welcome back to Draw and Living Waters. Very good. Very excited. Um, doing all right. Praise God. Talk about this. Uh, this is one of my one of my favorite chapters. I think in Exodus, and it's 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 up there in the Bible in general too. Yeah, I totally agree, Adam. It's one of my uh, favorite favorite stories, and it's one that I. Was well known as a you know as far as a childhood memory, and mm -hmm. um, that's what we do here on Drawing Limb Waters. Uh, we wanted to be we're kind of toning things back down. Uh, the original concept of the Drawing Limb Waters for everybody new to this, uh, we wanted to uh, literally just for all ages. This would be open for all ages, and especially children that children that's never heard the scriptures or anything to do with this biblical narrative at all. Maybe we can bring that to light here and be edifying to uh families and young people alike so uh i'm really looking forward to this one adam really looking forward to it um i'm gonna be the narrator brother adam is gonna bless us live on an illustration a drawing and we are going to jump right on in adam is there anything else you want to bring to light here before we get going on the program today um not, nothing in particular. Just hope um, hope you guys uh, enjoy enjoy the broadcast. All righty. <clears throat> so, Brother Adam's going to be starting to draw the burning bush. So, if anybody if anybody's out there that's you know thinking about miracles and what God did back in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and today. Um, there's certain things that just make me go, hmm, you know, I'm thinking, man, look at all, you know, I made the comment the other day, look at what God has created. If you go outside your doors, mm -hmm. that's something that man can't do on his own. He cannot create what he sees outside his doors or inside his doors, really, if you think about it, because everything comes from the dust of the ground, minerals, etc. So it's always an importance to uh, take time to uh, thank the Lord, thank God for all the mysterious things and the things that you can see. So on the right hand of the screen there, uh, Brother Adam is blessing us with the drawing. So let's get into Exodus 1 here. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Just the first verse, just the first verse, everybody here. Welcome to the program. If you haven't hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. Let us know where you're from. And uh, I know there's a lot of people that uh, listen in Alaska, Australia, different Whoa, types. That's cool. Yeah, different types of places. Yes, sir, Adam. And uh, what a blessing it is. So let's just go to the first verse of Exodus 3. I'm going to read it here. Now Moses kept the flock of Jephro, his father-in-law, the priest of Minna, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain 
of God, even to Horeb. So let's think about this and let's kind of just ponder on it for a little bit. So we have this um, burning bush concept here, what we're going to be talking about, what we're going to be narrating here throughout the whole program. Um, What, you know, when you literally think about the burning bush and what it signify event in the Bible where God speaks to Moses through a miraculous burning bush, could you imagine, and all young folks out there, if there's young children watching this, um, me and Adam's goal at the beginning too, and still to this day, is to, especially a lot of homeschool um, families have reached out to us, and they, and I'm thankful for all the love and support and the good feedback as far as uh, uh, us wanting to uh, do a show that is just kid-friendly. So, anybody out there listening, could you imagine walking up and you see a burning bush and literally God speaking? And, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to take away from the event of back in Moses' days, you know, I just think it's very uh, compelling and interesting. What do you think, Brother Adam? I mean, it's just, just, just knowing that there's a bush and literally God is communicating um, to Moses and asking him to do certain things. And, and, you know, could you imagine, Adam? Yeah, that would be just so cool. Um, I used to go like ex- exploring and stuff as a little kid um, in these woods by, by my house. <clears throat> And I remember hearing, uh, or, you know, my mom would read me, uh, I had this like children's Bible thing. And one of, one of the, the things in it was, was the burning bush. And I distinctly remember just being fascinated by that and, and being so curious about like, oh, what would that be like to, to see that? Or like kind of hoping to see something like that you know every time i'd venture out into the woods and stuff um but yeah that would be that would be so amazing um really just i mean captivating to see and then to know that that's that's god that is that is talking through well that was talking to moses um it's just amazing yeah i agree too and you know it's like um and some people well in today's society We've been so conditioned, they think that God doesn't perform miracles today. And here in 2024, I still know that God performs miracles. They might not be by burning bushes. Mm -hmm. They might not be, you learn audible, you don't hear his voice, like literally hear his voice. But I know the Holy Spirit is here, the great comforter. I know there is uh, moving pieces around that God is still with the remnant of God, like really literally with us, regardless of how weird and dark everything is and the absurdity in our world. I know that he is, uh, giving us blessings abundantly. And I always say this, we've talked about this on draw and live waters. If the land outside is still fertile, if the birds are still flying in the sky, there's a blessing. If the yeah. if the birds are fed, the birds are important, but we are more impo- uh, more important than the birds. So, if he's blessing the birds with you know herb bearing seed, he's going to bless us with abundance and more. So, I always point that out. So here we are. I just have read one verse, uh, but let's just summarize. Let's just come down to it here. So we're talking about Exodus three one. Uh, so we're, the story begins in the land of Midian, uh, Midian, Midian, where Moses is tending his uh, father-in-law's flock. But one day, he leads the flock to Horeb, the mountain of God. He comes across a remarkable sight, right? So what we're talking about here with the burning bush. In the midst of the wilderness, he sees a burning bush engulfed in flames, what Brother Adam's here uh, illustrating here. But it's not consumed by fire. So... Even that, just watching you draw it, and I just, you know, because if you take young folk out there, don't, you know, just disclaimer here, don't touch anything that's got fire. Let's make a disclaimer there. Don't touch anything hot. Um, This is for a learning program, so if if it's red and blazing hot, don't touch it. Um, But in Moses' account, 
this was a totally different uh, an Old Testament, totally different, totally different realm even back then. This is you know we're talking about the, the way back before the flood of Noah. So very interesting stuff here. So, anyways, so let's go to um, let's let's read on. Let's go to uh, verse two. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will, excuse me, that, that's the third verse. Let's stay here. Let's just continue on the third verse. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why? The bush is not burnt. So, what do you think, Adam, on just this two verses that I just read there? What do you think was going on there? And it's, the bushes are not burnt. It, I think, you know, what's your opinion on this? I'll give you mine after you, I'll give you the floor there. What do you think, Adam? It reminds me a lot of... Um these these really miraculous things that that defy logic and def, defy um the commonplace rules that god has built for for the world like for example it reminds me of um uh gideon you remember gideon he had the he had the the wool the wool fleece that he was praying to god okay god if this is really you um i'm gonna put this fleece down if it's really you that i'm hearing from make this fleece dry but the ground around it wet and then the next day it was like okay okay opposite now make the the fleece wet but the ground around it dry and it like it just shows that god can do things because he's the creator he's the one that created all this stuff he knows how exactly how it works and mm -hmm. um he can make something uh defy the rules that he's already set because he is he is he is god but not only that it makes me think that this fire is um is uh i i hadn't really thought about it until right now but it also reminds me of um in revelation where uh that there's like a it says that there, there's there's a rainbow around god's throne like unto a, like an emerald i'm paraphrasing there but it makes me think that there's there's other kinds of fire that isn't just um the fire that we know here and maybe that's that's the case of something that could have happened here. absolutely um brother adam i misspoke a minute ago and if there's uh, young young children and young people um and adults too i misspoke i misspoke here on uh, drawing them waters i need to correct it um i was i said the noah uh, this Moses account was before Noah. And what am I thinking here? Okay. I'm so sorry, yeah. folks. I misspoke. Uh, thank you, Adam, for when you were speaking there. That's what it reminded me. So I apologize for that. That was just a uh, that was a mistake on my part. So forgive me for that. I just want to uh, Noah's flood is uh, before Moses. So forgive me for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I wanted to make sure that I corrected myself, uh, Adam. So yeah, go that ahead though. I wasn't too sure. I thought I thought that's what you might have said, but I wasn't. I wasn't too sure. <laughs> yeah, over here and uh, no, no, no. It um, that was a too. that was a totally good, blank good on my catch. part. No, that was a totally blank on my part. I'm, I'm I apologize. We are going to be doing in the near future just a a little insight there, not to get too far off uh, the path here, but we are going to be doing a program about Noah's Ark here soon. So that one's going to be interesting to say the least. But uh, yeah, forgive me, folks. That was a mistake on my part. I want to point that out before we go any further. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Adam. No, no problem. Um, um, yeah, but I think, uh, yeah, Moses Moses would be, uh, I mean, who wouldn't want to go check this thing out, you know? Uh, absolutely. Agreed. 100%. It says that, that he, he, turned, he turned aside and was like, hey, I, what's going on here? Why is this, why is this not burning? You know? Yeah, I mean, you know, just to kind of, here's my take on it, two and two and three. You have this um, burning bush, obviously, but you have a voice calling out to him within the flames. 
so the voice identifies itself as God and the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. So, and uh, God instructs Moses to take off his sandals that he is standing on holy ground. So I kind of wanted to, we haven't got that far yet. I'm kind of uh, skipping there. Yeah, I haven't read those verses, but I wanted to kind of emphasize how the burning bush and the holy ground concept, and there's a lot mm-hmm. to it. But we'll, let's get back in and see what the scriptures say. Let's, let's continue on in verse uh, verse 4. Also, if I could oh, add no, to go ahead, Adam. real quick, because um, it also reminds me that um, the verses that talk about that, that our, our God is like a, like a, there's there's a, a fire to them too, you know, um, this this like holy fire, <laughs> basically, you know, um, and then it talks about uh, uh, being baptized with with the like fire too of like the Holy Spirit and and us going through the fire right and being purified and stuff. Um, so I think it's it's neat to see the fire aspect now here in, in Exodus too. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Uh, we continue on here, and uh, chapter 3 of Exodus, uh, verse 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Or excuse me, here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, but put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest in the holy ground. Uh, Moreover, he said, this is verse 6, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Adam, that's, I mean, when I think about just that last verse. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what do you think about that? Because, uh, what do you think? There, we dude, could. I, I can't even imagine, man. Like thinking about how how holy God is. How, I mean, com- like we have no right to stand yeah. before and and to look upon Him. You know, um, it. I think that's and to think about what um, what Moses had done too just before that you know like why he ran away and everything mm-hmm. so you know um yeah i mean that's that's just that's just amazing to think about and yeah that and there was even in, in isaiah too when isaiah gets um i think it was in isaiah is that right where isaiah gets taken up and he's before the throne and he basically like falls down and he's he, he can't He's not worthy to be there, basically, he's saying. And then uh, I think there's a, a cherubim, I think, comes and takes a coal and, you know. But anyways, it's, it's. I think that's a reaction we'd probably all relate to and all feel look with presented with such a thing. A hundred percent. Here's my take, too, Brother Adam. Um, didn't Moses tell God just to blot my name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. I think it was the Lamb's Book of Life, wasn't it? Was it Moses um, referring to blotting his name out because he couldn't, um, he just couldn't bear it and taking everybody through the, you know, the... Right, yeah. So there's something to point out there. And, you know, in the last, we were talking about the verse six here and then at the very end of it, and Moses hit his face. Yeah. He... I could I could imagine I say that the burning bush, just hearing the you're know, seeing the burning bush and hearing the audible voice and then saying, "This is the father of uh, thy father of God Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob," mm-hmm. and I bet you the just the the presence, you know, because when the Bible where it talks about every knee shall bow when yeah. when the Lord shows up, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's kind of interesting. Like he could not, I take it like this. He couldn't take it. He had to, he yeah. had to go, you know, he just, the presence was just so overwhelming, you know? Yeah. So uh-huh. there, you, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I just wanted to share that. That's, um, a, that's a really cool insight. Yeah. Yeah. So let's continue on in verse seven. 
Um, hope everybody's liking the program. Um, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Welcome everybody to Dry Living Waters, and welcome everybody to Visual Disturbance and FOJC Underground Church. And sorry for a few little hiccups. I wanted to apologize once bef- once again. A few minutes ago, I misspoke. So uh, give a little grace. Give a little grace today. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, number seven, verse seven. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land into a good land and a large and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzitites and the Hittites and the Jezebites. Now, therefore, behold the cry of the children of Israel Come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression where with the Egyptians oppress them. Those are pretty strong verses, and you know the milk and honey, the milk and honey, Adam, the milk and honey thing. You know, we could go down a big rabbit trail, but I want to keep it on just for all ages, because if we get too far off. I want to be I want this to be edifying for smaller audience. I don't want to go too far and uh you know just go in different rabbit holes. So just these verses alone here uh I have a lot to speak about these. Um you know 7 through 10 here, you know God's revealing, he reveals to Moses. He reveals to Moses that he heard the cities, you know, the of the Israelites who are suffering mm-hmm. under the oppression of the Egyptians. And uh, he had chosen, he chosen Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt into the land flowing with milk and honey. I mean, could you imagine the task and the responsibility that Moses had? Just that, just, and um, and I think that's when I come back to my comment earlier uh, that he was, you know, asking God to blot his name out because I think that he got caught in the flesh. You know, he th- he thought he couldn't endure it. He didn't think. I mean. And let's just say this, the burning bush, if God's going to come to you and speak to you, literally, and give you a sign, and a, you know, a signal, or and a burning bush is speaking, you know mm-hmm. darn well that he's equipped you <laughs> to uh, lead these uh, people out of Egypt and into the land of milk, uh, flowing with milk and honey. So, and one thing too, in today's, in today's society, right? So people, it, it seems like we've kind of coming off the rails. It's like... People are suppressing and saying that there's no need that we, you know, need to read or get to know the Lord or get to know the scriptures. We we just love God and that's it. Well, that's not that's not what we that's not what we should do. do and see, Moses battled with his flesh. That's that's mm-hmm. an account. There's that's all throughout the biblical account. He 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 battled his flesh. He battled the responsibility. And God, much is given, much is required, right? So God's not going to give you no more than you can handle, even into modern day. So if you if the if you might not have a burning bush speaking to you like literally, or you know um, certain types of signs or miracles or whatever, but God is here. The Great Comforter is here. So these things we need to make sure we keep our eyes on the on the God of Abraham, Jacob. And uh, we want to, these are, this narrative, this, this like biblical account is to, uh, even though it's Old Testament, we need to really gravitate toward it and literally say, this is an importance to apply to our uh, life in 2024. They can still, and I always, I've said this years ago, if Moses right now, for example, like, let's just say we could go back in time, God is not bound to the timeline that we have in this human domain. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, God, I just think about the miraculous miracles, you know, God knew Moses and God knew, you know, I'm not trying to boat, you know, say my name, but Brian and Adam, and that we would be presenting this draw and living waters program in 2024. Let's just face it. I mean, and, 
he had to move the pieces, the blessings, the the uh, getting the Israelites out, moving them out, and moving and moving all the pieces to for us to have this great day. And like I said earlier, the abundance of blessings that God is presenting, and we visually can go outside. We physically can go outside, and we know that the land. It not might it might not be the place where the milk is flowing like it's referring to here in the biblical narrative here flowing with milk and honey, but I can assure you we don't have grapes as big as the house or the campers. But if you take seed and you plant outside and you tend to your garden or tend to your land and be attentive, God will bless it. We are supposed to be tillers of the land. That's what we are literally built for. Man has purpose. Well, the most important purpose is is to worship the Almighty. Everything else is blessings when it comes to talents and abilities. Those was given freely by God. And plus freely, this air bearing seed. I know we've done some uh, really cool Draw and Live Mars programs in the past. I, you know, I recommend everybody go back and listen to quite a few of those. We had Genesis in the beginning was the very first one. So here we are. Um, we have God's promises to Moses throughout this, his mission. So he has a mission and he assures him that the people of Israel will believe in the divine plan. So to get them out of Egypt. So as we continue on here, let's go back to the scriptures. Let's continue on. And um, uh, so I've read, I've read chapter, I read verse 10. Let's read it one more time. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. I haven't read this one yet. Forgive me. Um, That thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I, that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye serve, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And that's verse 12 there. And uh, so just, let's continue on. Let's continue on. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them the god of your fathers have sent me unto you and they and they shall say to me what is his name what shall i say unto them and god said unto moses i am that i am and he said thou shall thou say unto the children of israel i am have sent me unto you unto you and god said move over moses Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord of God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is a memorial unto all generations. All generations. So memory of all generations. And, yeah, Adam, that one just, so when you say, when you're, you know, talking about this specific one, these these verses here. I think about, you know, Moses' hesitation, like we mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. I referred to his hesitation because he was probably saying, well, I'm just a man, you know. Um, yeah. I'm just a man and I have nothing to, uh, I have nothing to, uh, I have no special gifts. I have, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, like, and that's why I was referring to earlier. That's why this world is geared to um, suppress you. And there's things that God has laid out, but let's just face it. The devil gets in your mind, causes confusion, and suppresses people's um, just everything. You know, I I don't even want to get into the term dream, but literally like everything that God is trying to do, we get caught in the flesh and we try to take it and do it upon ourselves. We go and try to do it all on our own shoulders and we don't depend on on the father that back in the day in the narrative of Moses here in the biblical account that could talk and burn a bush and literally 
tell Moses directions and give him a mission. And I know today with all the applications and all inundated with all the things in our society, we get kind of, um, I guess, the broadened path is very, uh, let's just say, enticing because you can go in all kinds of different directions. But guess what? It leads to not the broadened. It doesn't lead to the narrow way. It leads to the broadened path of destruction. There's so many. It's pretty broad, Brother Adam. So the narrow is the way. And I know that according to this account, Moses had a narrow path for sure, didn't he, Brother Adam? Go ahead and I'll let you talk about this. And what do you think? Oof. Um, yeah, it's. I think. I feel like there, there comes a time in a believer's life when God will put something on you to to say or to do um and sometimes it can it can feel like that like how Moses was saying like like who am I like I to to go and do this stuff you know um and I think like you're saying getting in the flesh happens and I mean personally I could relate to this like so much especially right now um uh just recently had a had a uh baby boy um praise god and it's it's very like it's shifting of, of of my mind in a way because then all this worry set, starts setting in like well, how, what is going to happen here and what's that but then got to really try to pray against that and, and realize that you no know, god has everything in in order he he knows everything that's going on and also similarly like um going back a few verses back to where um, God told Moses out of the bush that he has surely heard the cries of the Israelites that um, I think we can take a lot of comfort knowing that that God hears us when when we're when we're distressed when we're worried um, he hears us and um, he he knows he knows what's best and yeah we may not like you're saying we may not see a uh, a burning bush but we have, we have this we have we have our bibles we have our bibles that and this is this is how this is how we communicate with god now like he, he's given us his written word and he wrote about this very event in this book and um everything that we need is is right in there and it'll settle us it'll correct us guide us um i hope that makes sense it totally does adam totally does and i can relate to um Congrats on your little boy, by the way. Uh, you and your wife um, are well deserved of that little baby, and God has uh, chose God. <laughs> you both to uh, raise that uh, awesome little boy. So, what a blessing! But yeah, yeah, it's uh, you know, I think that's why we do these programs, especially. Um, there's a lot, that, you know, what much is given, much is required, and um, you know, uh, just on a serious note here. You know, people all the world take their time to listen and talk and you know, come on here and see what we have to say. And it is awesome. It is awesome for, you know, to fellowship and come on here mm -hmm. and just have a conversation. And um, it's just really neat. And it's hard. It's it's very humbling. And we appreciate your time, especially here on the Visual Disturbance Channel and FOJC Underground Church. Uh, me and Brother Adam are very blessed that you want to spend time with this on this early afternoon here for a uh, live broadcast of draw limb waters. So it's really just really humbling. So um, I truly mean that because there's a lot of cost here. You know, we have, um, I have children, Adam has a child and um, like he said, it changes your perspective, it changes your mindset. It, uh, it brings more to the table because then you have, um, responsibilities just like Moses did when he was leading mm -hmm. the, the the people out of Israel I mean out of Egypt um, and we're not in Egypt obviously here in America but uh, or like I always say here on drawing limb waters planting seed not going out and cultivating or tilling the ground you know that'd be uh, that's not what I mean I'm talking about planting seed let's just say I'm gonna try to uh, keep it simplified here in your mind, in your brain. I could say neural pathways, but we don't want to plant seed that's going to sprout and cause, let's just say, thorns. 
We don't want mm-hmm. the mind to be disrupted and 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 um, have throw out throw out discord. We don't want to have to throw out this what the what the nastiness of the world throws out. So here on Drawing Limb Waters, when we do this programs, uh, I just love the drawings. I love the illustrations and um, Brother Adam. It's always a blessing. It's always a blessing here. So. I just want to throw it out there real quick. Let's continue on reading. We have uh, here in this uh, verse, or this chapter 3 of Exodus, we have quite a few verses to uh, continue on reading here. I might have, let's just read it over again. Um, Let's read, let's go start at 16. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord of your God fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, Jacob, appear unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you out of the affliction of Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Paras. It's horribly, this is a very difficult word. If there's any children, say this word 15,000 times in a row, and it's very difficult. I can barely say it three times. Um, parasites, parasites, not parasites, 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 parasites. Yeah, and the Hivites and the Jezebites unto the land flowing with milk and honey. And verse 18, and they shall hearken unto thy voice and thou shall come thou and the elders of Israel unto the king of Egypt. And they shall say unto them, the Lord God of the Hebrews have met with us. And now let us go. We beseech thee, three days journey into the wilderness, three days, Adam, yeah. that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst of thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go in empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor, and of her uh, sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And ye shall put them up your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. Chapter 3 of Exodus 1-22 through 22. And there's a lot, if you slow down and take the time to read that, and even going into chapter four, which we're not going to talk about today, but when you go into that and you have this encounter with the God Almighty, with the burning bush, and you see that his divine intervention, God's divine intervention in the lives of his people, all this back all those thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, and this encounter, God reveals his plan to deliver the Israelites from the hands of, of the Egyptians and bring them into the land of abundance and freedom, abundance and freedom. As we reflect on this story, right? Uh, let us remember the significance of the burning bush, the burning bush and the divine, the divine call to the following in God's plan for our lives. Seriously, Adam, like for our lives. And like I mentioned a few minutes ago for 2024, if this account did not happen the way that it was written and the way that it was done in throughout those times that God permitted those times and times and years and generations ago, the things that are today would not be here. I don't even know. There would, there's a lot of things that we could go down a rabbit hole with that, but with these things in this one through 22 of Exodus three, there is a lot here and anybody out there that's homeschooling or, um, any parents, uh, mothers and fathers out there, um, homeschooling and whatnot and uh teaching the bible to their children i hope this is edifying i hope this is um especially with brother adam's uh, drawing here and he's even he's even throwing the staff he's even got moses in the background right now with the burning bush and i think that's really cool so um please comment below if you like this program if you like what we're going what we're doing here uh seen a lot of good feedback on our uh just commentary on some people that are new to visual disturbance and new to the draw and living waters uh, we introduced it to FOJC radio not too long ago and i've got a lot of good feedback and and really good criticism too so i was you know a lot of people was saying hey you know can we tone it down for the children only so that's what we're trying to do today we're trying to do a little refreshing and um i hope it's 
I hope it's well uh well well received. I hope it's well received for a younger audience. So uh, like I said, this is for all ages and I hope it's been a blessing. And uh, that's, you know, Brother Adam spoke about his son. This is why we're going to continue doing these programs. And if the world continues on and we make it through April the 8th, um, that's a little sarcasm there. Uh, don't believe the hype on that and the uh, all that narrative. I know there's people in the commenting on that. Um, just like the days, you know, we're speaking about here with Moses I don't think Moses would be worried about an eclipse coming um, because he knew that he stood the ground. You know, he walked the walk. He walked that narrow path, even though he had to endure, even though there's like all kinds of insanity going along and he had to be um, responsible for so many people to go through the wilderness. As we are here in 2024, even though we have all these, we have all these luxuries and stuff, if it was... If this was thousands of years ago in Moses' time, Adam, the kings mm-hmm. that lived upon the land would like, with the stuff that we, you know, all the, all the luxuries here in America, they would go into, they would be like, these people have gold upon gold, you know, all the luxuries we have and the convenience. So don't take that for granted, everybody. Don't take that for granted. And uh, one day, if, you know, who knows what we'll have to endure, but there's no reason to be in fear of this specific date on April the 8th, you know, just be in prayer. And that's all I'm going to say about it. And, uh, cause I know there's some people commenting in the chat there, but let's stand strong, stand strong. The Lord, the Lord gives us strength. He's our armor. Ephesians five. Uh, I suggest it. Well, I mean, I recommend, excuse me. I must smoke again. I recommend everybody going and to uh, reading, uh, uh, Ephesians five. It's a really good read. All the Bible is, but, mm-hmm. um, we totally, uh, that's what we want to emphasize here. This is a biblical based program. Uh, hope everybody hits the like button, hit the subscribe button, share this thing out, share this thing out. Cause me and Adam are, uh, really trying to, um, just illustrate and give everybody drawings and actually a visual. So you can have like, it's a little, you know, cause the, you know, KJV Bible sometimes can be a very hard to read. Like we've presented today. <laughs> um, there's certain words that are very, a uh, little bit more complex for especially younger audience. So hopefully with these uh, drawings that we've done on drawing the Mars, I hope it's a blessing. I hope it's a blessing and the children can resonate. Oh, did they, you know, e- Exodus three. Okay. There's, you know, brother Adam draw a drawing. And one thing too, I could not do this program without brother Adam. I could not do this program and he's uh, sacrificed his time. And I just want to give a shout out to brother Adam Abara here and what a blessing he is here to the visual disturbance community and the whole ministry, uh, NAC TV and FOJC radio. Uh, what a blessing you are and an asset to, uh, the program. So all the programs, even the proverb series on NAC TV, uh, go check that with brother John Pounders. Uh, brother Adam is, uh, a uh, co-host of that too so um yeah adam's uh adam's doing god work he's doing god's work so no, adam all, all glory to god man i mean and likewise i i think i'm pretty sure i said it before i don't know how you do the, <laughs> the youtube stuff man like yeah it's literally if, if you didn't <laughs> weren't invested with in it and, and god didn't bless you with the knowledge and skills to be able to build this and yeah, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have the program, and it's and just all glory to God for even just putting the two of us together. <laughs> it yeah, is a, a kind of a miracle in itself. There. Yeah, a group effort. We got west. We got the western side of America where Adam lives, and I'm over here down south, eastern a little bit, eastern southish over here on the east coast. And uh, we are uh, literally like 28 hours away from each other if we was to yeah. drive. And um, yeah, so we are here we are connecting on the Internet of Things. And I hope it is a blessing. And um, we're just combating this airways, you know, the, we're going through here and trying to uh, really just bring, you know, a different, a different spin as far as wanting to incorporate drawings with biblical scripture so yeah adam what's the drawing about give us the breakdown and uh well, what's your what's your take too on the last few verses that we read here what's your take on the whole thing of exodus 3 uh 1 through 22 just give me a whole just conclusion summary of it what's your thoughts 
and then uh, I'll give the floor, just give the floor to you and speak upon your painting here, your uh, drawing here, and tell everybody a little bit about it. And um, real quick too, when he gets done, usually what we do, we put the link in the description or we'll uh, put it in and it'll be on the coffee website. I think the link is in the description. We'll have like, I'll put the link up there if you can purchase it, if you want to, it's up to you all. But uh, Brother Adam's paintings are a blessing. So Brother Adam, uh, what's your take? And you have any last words here as far as the conclusion to Exodus 3, uh, literally the burning bush of Moses here, episode 8 of Drawing Loom Waters. What's your, what's your take on uh, 1 through 22? I think a um, couple other things that are cool to, to note that I love about this is uh, in verse 14 where it says, it says uh, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Um, I just love and I've been listening to the audio, audio of, of John lately, the book of John. And um, it's just, it's amazing because here we have in John 6, 35, it says, um, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. And then in um, John 8, 56 and 58, uh, I'll just go to, uh, I think it's 58 here. Um, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And Jesus is making the profound connection that he is, he is the I am. He is, he is God in the flesh, um, which I think is something that can't be ignored. Um, and um, it's just, it's just awesome. It is, it's a amazing thing to to think on and look at the the miracles that, that God can do, but also knowing that, you know, um, we won't always see a burning bush, but we'll always know that God can hear us and that we can go to him for, for our needs. A hundred percent, Adam, hundred percent. Well, like I said earlier, emphasizing stay away. If you actually see a burning bush, don't, um, you know, just for a younger audience, don't touch it. Just call mommy and daddy and say, call the fire department, you know, but, um, but yeah, that's a little inside humor there, but it actually realistically don't, don't go, don't, do it. don't touch it. Don't, don't touch, touch it. it. Um, yeah. absolutely. I think it said in the scripture that Moses touched it. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. So <laughs> just making a disclaimer, yeah. if there's any younger uh, ears listening to this program, uh, Talk to mommy and daddy, call mommy and daddy, and call the fire department if you see something of that effect. But uh, this account here in Moses' account was a special divine uh, account and a uh, divine appointment uh, for the Lord to move this man to get the people out of Egypt. And, you know, real quick, uh, one thing that I would say, Brother Adam, Mm -hmm. We are, we still, in this day, there's things with Egyptian in our land, in our land. And, uh, you know, that'd be a, that'd be a whole nother episode in itself, but we could go down a a few little moments of talking about, but there will be a time where, you know, we're talking about Babylon and whatnot. There's things that there's a lot of Egyptian things that are upon our land. A lot of places that are named after places that happened like Cairo, Cairo. There's different places here in America. And that's just very interesting to me that oh, yeah. they continue on these names and everything. It's just, it, it's crazy, especially on totally different plane of land. So it's just a little wild, but, but yeah, um, I really appreciate everybody attending with us this, this beautiful, well, Kentucky day. I don't know how it is over in Arizona where brother Adam resides at, but the sun looks really bright over there in the back, oh, in the yeah. background. So, uh, things are Adam, heating up. Uh, things are heating up. So, uh, Adam, explain the drawing and then we'll conclude the video here in the program, the live feed. So, uh, just share what's your thoughts, what's your inspiration. Just listen to me narrate and speak. We haven't been live for a long time on drawing limb waters. So this has been a treat. 
and a treat for me also. So speak yeah, about your painting. Mm-hmm. Very fun to get back into it. But um, I just wanted to really focus in on the uh, on the bush and thinking about the color. I, I feel like I always get caught up in on the color of stuff on all these all these shows that we do um, almost always. But yeah, just trying to think of the colors and stuff and making it not look like just uh, so having a little bit extra different colors, like some of these pinks, and I had some greens and, and stuff in there too before. Uh, again, just trying to think of that um, the 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 rainbow and the fire that's around the throne of God. Um, it's like kind of cool. So trying to grab a little bit of extra color in there, and um, yeah, threw in uh, Moses wandering in here too. Uh, where is this guy? Yeah. Yeah, through him wandering in. Oops, why can't I do that? Uh oh, sorry. My uh, I was trying to move him, but I guess I can't. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, got him wandering in, <laughs> uh, taking a peek at everything. Um, so yeah, that's about it. And here on Draw and Live Mars, we will also give you the ability to have animations. Uh, Brother Adam almost uh, made Moses walk across the screen there behind the burning <laughs> bush. So, um, uh, yeah, I know that he could probably pull it off. Me and him probably could do that for future endeavors. What a task that would be to have a 3D yeah. rendering uh, imagery. But wouldn't that be something to to uh, bring up for a futuristic drawing live Mars probably in 2050 uh, to pull off an endeavor to have a full-blown like you see on the movies. So we would have to... Uh, put both our minds together and, um, yeah, so do some ingenuitive, uh, for sure, being very engineered. We'd have to come up with some visual and graphic design uh, concepts to make that all, pull that off, that endeavor. But, Adam, it's been a blessing. I've enjoyed this program. Episode 8, The Burning Bush of Moses, Draw Limb Waters. Any last words, Brother Adam? And thank you for being um, always here for me and helping me out with this program. So, um any last words, Brother Adam? No, just thanks. Uh, thanks to the Lord for arranging this, and thank you to everybody. Thank you, Brian, for arra- for setting everything up. And, uh, yeah, just excited to get back to it. And thanks for everybody's patience. Well, um, just different adjustments and stuff, getting used to things over here. And, um, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, enjoy this. Absolutely. Well, folks... That concludes our Draw and Live Waters, Episode 8, The Burning Bush of Moses. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. Hit all the links in the description. It helps out with the algorithm and everything. And um, one one quick thing, too, um, some announcements here. I am trying to uh, build a social community. If you're in any kind of social media, I'm, I've got the links in the description trying to uh, help out with FOJC and facilitate certain things and help pieces out with Don and David. So if you don't care to take the time and subscribe or follow Visual Disturbance, I think I'm on I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, oh, I'm on Twitter me. X. I'm on Twitter X, but uh, I know that's a really hard one to get into. But Facebook, if you want to um, follow me on Facebook, we really appreciate it. And I'm trying to move some pieces around for some future endeavors on FOJC Underground Church. But that being said, welcome everybody back to the live program. And I'm glad to see everybody. Thank you all for attending here, especially on Visual Disturbance and FOJC Underground Church. Both both stream at the same time, Adam. Both stream at the same time. But um, appreciate it, folks. And uh, me and Adam are going to uh, conclude here and end this out. And thank you for uh, being part of the Draw and Live Mars Episode 8 program. And anybody that's watching this in the future, you know, future recording of it, please hit the like button, comment below, give us some good feedback, give us some bad feedback. We take it all. We'll take good criticism, bad Mm -hmm. criticism, whatever. Um, And let us know what we can improve on. If you totally loved it, just say it in the chat or say it in the comments of the description of this video. We really appreciate it. And I think, folks, we are out of here. Everybody be blessed. Have a good, blessed day and a good week. We'll see you on the next one, on episode nine.